Hello, welcome to our program, the Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm uh, Dr. Lewis Hassel, a pathologist at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. And our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a joint venture with the uh, Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. Uh, our program and case today comes from the realm of GI pathology. Um, it's uh, a case that uh, we don't frequently encounter, but is common enough that uh, one should be aware of it. Um, the patient is a uh, older gentleman who's uh, been found to have some anemia and seems to be having a little bit of epigastric pain. And in that setting, that's usually enough to trigger an upper endoscopy, which is what he uh, got. At the time of upper endoscopy, uh, he was noted to have a somewhat unusual appearance in his esophagus. And here's a representative image uh, showing you that there are these sort of little strips of uh, mucosa sort of in linear fashion, almost uh, just uh, falling off or uh, coming off very easily from the underlying uh, esophageal mucosa. And we don't see any particular masses. We see a fairly normal vascular pattern. We don't see hemorrhage associated with this. It doesn't look uh, pussy or anything like that. It just looks like uh, sort of a paper cast almost of the uh, esophageal lining. <clears throat> so uh, fragments of this uh, were uh, submitted to pathology for uh, evaluation. And this is a representative image of what uh, uh, was seen at the time. Um, here we see a couple of uh, biopsy fragments. Um, and as you can see, there's a little bit of uh, uh, sort of basal uh, blueness to this, uh, maybe what we'd refer to as basal hyperplasia. And then as we look more superficially, we see this sort of stuck on a uh, bit of uh, surface epithelium and a little bit of clefting here between the uh, squamous mucosa and or within the squamous mucosa. Now there's a little bit of inflammation here, but not very much. Um, maybe a little bit of parakeratosis in uh, this particular fragment. Uh, if we look over here at the other fragment, uh, we'll see here that uh, we have a, a little bit of similar sort of change, maybe a little bit more inflammation out of the parakeratosis. Um, as you can see here, there's some nuclei here and a few inflammatory cells with this, but it's, but it's not the rich neutrophilic uh, type of thing that we usually see with fungal esophagitis. Uh, or certainly not a, a viral uh, necrotizing uh, uh, esophagitis sort of change. Uh, so uh, this is uh, what has been termed, and here you can see the, the cleft actually is beneath the perikeratotic layer here, uh, just in the superficial mucosa. So this is what's been termed uh, esophagi esophagitis desiccans superficialis, or more commonly referred to perhaps as uh, sloughing esophagitis. Now, sometimes this is not even symptomatic uh, in these patients, and it, it may be more like our patient who was kind of endoscoped for other reasons uh, other than anything referable specifically to the esophagus. Uh, usually these are older, more mature individuals. Um, and uh, it's been described that this separation between within the uh, keratinizing epithelium, or the, excuse me, the squamous epithelium, can happen at several different levels. Um, as you might imagine, there's just a variety of possible uh, triggers for this, and, and none are definite or none are, are firmly can, uh, you know, assigned in terms of pathogenesis and so forth, because it's somewhat variable. Whatever it is that can cause some uh, disruption of the uh, tight junctions within the squamous mucosa is probably capable of causing that. Um, and so as it presents, sometimes it begins with these little cystic spaces or bully uh, with uh, some degree of parakeratosis, uh, some reactive basal hyperplasia, and sometimes there may be fungi, uh, yeast forms that may be associated with this, either in a commensal or coincidental uh, uh, manner. Um, because of the uh, gross appearance, uh, it can be confused grossly with uh, candida esophagitis, uh, as well as uh, with other primary skin diseases in various patients, uh, bullous pemphigoid, for example. And of course, you also have to rule out any sort of artifact or traumatic uh, injury as the cause for this lesion. Now, because uh, you're unlikely to see very many of these in your own practice, I thought I'd include a few additional examples here uh, to just uh, give you a better uh, baseline for how to evaluate this. Now, here's a, uh, a number of fragments. And here, even at low power, I think we get the clue right here. Uh, there's this fragment of... Uh, 
detached uh, squamous uh, perikeratotic uh, epithelium uh, that is uh, not associated with the underlying uh, tissue. So it sort of floated off uh, at the time of the biopsy. Uh, as we look at these other sections, uh, we see some of the basal hyperplasia, uh, but uh, we're not seeing very much of uh, the area where it might have separated. Here's just a little bit of suggestion right there uh, in that area. But we certainly have a very nice basal hyperplasia. Um, in another example here, uh, let's take a look. Um, uh, here's an, a nice example that illustrates the intraepithelial cystic formation uh, that can lead to this sort of a change. So here we see a number of these intraepithelial uh, bully or cystic spaces. Uh, with a, a, an associated superficial and maybe even a little deeper uh, uh, cleft formation uh, within the epithelium. Uh, and so this can be a harbinger uh, to look for this if you see these uh, intraepithelial uh, cystic spaces with uh, associated uh, ser uh, uh, serous type fluid within them. And then uh, I think we've got one more example here. Um, uh, another example here that shows uh, perhaps just a little bit. Let me just take a look at the annotations. I think I put some annotations in here. So we'll go right there. Whoops. So here's one of the ones you see the basal hyperplasia um, and uh, then uh, the superficial uh, sloughing uh, ep epithelium here along the surface. So when you come back and look at these slides yourself, I, I have annotated many of the slides so you can see the highlights of what we're looking at with this uh, disorder. So uh, with that, our final sign-out diagnosis, I'm going to skip this slide and let you look at that on your own, uh, was uh, esophagitis desiccans superficialis or sloughing esophagitis. Noting, however, that this is really not very inflammatory. So we use the esophagitis term here but it's really not a true uh, inflammatory disorder uh, in terms of uh, provoking any sort of cellular uh, inflammation. <clears throat> it's more of a, uh, uh, just a, uh, a desiccans or sloughing uh, type of process. So uh, thank you for joining us. I uh, hope that this will be useful to you and help to enlighten uh, your experience as you look at esophageal biopsies in your practice, uh, wherever you may be. And so until next time, uh, thanks so much for joining me.